Hello, my name is Shadow Tempo and I'm going to make a series of videos about the new features in ES6, which is officially called ES2015. For this first video, I'm going to show you two ways we can start using the new features of ES6 today. As of the recording of this video, there is still a lot of missing parts of the ES6 spec in most of the browsers, which make it almost impractical to use ES6 natively in the browsers. So Babel comes to the rescue. Babel is a JavaScript transpiler that will transpile the ES6 code into the very well known and adopted ES5. One way of using Babel is to transpile the ES6 code on the fly. To use Babel we have to install it, and the easiest way to do that is through npm. I'm going to assume you have Node.js installed and thus npm as well. After that we will need a package.json file. If you don't have one already, now it's time to create one. The simplest way to do that is by typing npm init in a console. npm will ask a series of questions and I will accept the default answer to all of them. With the package.json file created, I'm going to install Babel. And that is as simple as running npm install babel-car-save. -dash -dash With Babel installed, now it's time to code. I already have a boilerplate HTML file created and I'm going to add a reference to the Babel script. Browser.js is the file I want to use for transpile the code at runtime. With that in place, I can start coding. So I'm going to add a script tag with the type text slash Babel, which is the way Babel knows there's a script it has to transpile. Within the script tag, I'm just going to type some ES6 code to demonstrate that it's working. Now, if I open the browser and point to the HTML file, we can see my hello, e hello ES6 in the page, meaning Babel is transpiling the code at runtime and it's working. That's great and all, but I don't want to transpile my code on the fly all the time, because I don't want my users to have to download the transpiler neither have to wait for each script to be transpiled. So I'm going to transpile the code before deploying my site and I'm going to do that automatically. To do that, I'm going to use Gulp. Gulp is an automation tool that uses Node. So again, I'm going to assume you have Node.js and npm installed and with that, I'm going to open a console. Within my project folder, I'm going to type npm install gulp, gulp-connect, Dash dash save dash dev. Gulp is required to automate our tasks, and Gulp Connect is a plugin I will use to serve the site once it's compiled. Now, for Gulp to work, it needs a Gulp file.js, so I'm going to create one. With that in place, I have to declare some variables to use Gulp and its plugins. So, var Gulp equals require gulp and var connect equals require gulp dash connect. Now I'm going to start my first task. This task will be used by gulp to serve the site. I'm going to call it connect. So I'm connecting to localhost using the port 9000 and the root directory of my application is the folder dist. The last parameter is telling Gulp Connect to reload when a file changes. We'll see how that works in a moment. Now, I'm going to actually transpile my JS files with another task which I'm going to call JS. Before writing this task, I'm going to install some other plugins for Gulp. So back to the console. Now, I'm installing Br Browserify, Babelify, and Vinosaur Stream. Browserify will allow me to bundle my JavaScript files if I have multiple files. Also, we'll keep the existing module separation. Babelify is a plugin that will integrate with Browserify to use Babel and compile the JavaScript files. Vinosaur string will help us capture the text string and bundle in a single file. Now that I have all plugins installed, I can write the JS task. In the JS task, I will use Browserify and pass in the path to the main file of my application. Think of it as the main entrance door. After that, I will transpile the code using Babelify, bundle it into a file called all.js, save it to the dist scripts folder, and reload the browser. 
I also have to copy my HTML file to the disk folder. So I'll do that using an HTML task in Gulp. All that task does is copy any HTML file to the disk folder and reload the browser. One more task that I'll create, it's the default task. The default task will allow me to run all these tasks by simply typing gulp in the console. So by typing gulp, all those tasks will be executed because I added them as a dependence to the default task. Now I'm going to add my main.js file and another JavaScript file called person.js written using ES6, just to test that all is working. All this code do is to create an instance of a person class and say hello in the browser's console. I also have to change the HTML file to use the all.js file that was generated by the bundle. In the console, I'll type gulp, and in the browser, I'll open localhost at port 9000, which was the port I configured before. And if I open the browser's console, then I can see my hello message. Great! Now, it would be great that if when I change my JavaScript files or my HTML file, that those files were automatically recompiled and the page was reloaded in the browser. So let's do that. First, I'm going to add a gulp task to watch for those files, and if any of them change, I'll fire the JS or HTML task respectively. At the end of those tasks, I've already added an instruction to reload the browser. All that is left to do is to add this new task to be run with the default task. Now, I have to restart gulp. Let's try and make a change to a JavaScript file. And we can see the result in the browser's console. Now let me try changing the HTML file. And it works as well. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.